uh, so why did it happen? Well, there is a background. The background is uh, what you began to discuss for, if we go back to the early 1990s when the current issue begins to develop, uh, the Soviet Union collapsed. Uh, President George H.W. Bush, his Secretary of State James v. Baker, and negotiated with uh, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, Russian leader in the background, were the major German uh, political figures, Hans Genscher, Helmut Kohl, Germany was directly involved in this. And they reached an agreement. The agreement was, it was a firm, explicit agreement. There's been a lot of prevarication about this. So if you want the details, I'd simply suggest looking to the, at the authoritative National Security Archive, which has the original documents easily accessible. Uh, the agreement was that Russia would agree to allowing Germany to be unified and to join NATO, which is quite a commitment on the part of Russia. If you look back to the history of the 20th century, but they agreed on the condition, the explicit formal condition that NATO would not expand one inch to the east. That commitment was adhered to by President Bush, Bush number one. Mm -hmm. uh, the early years of Clinton, Clinton followed for a couple of years, he kept to it too. By 1994, he was already uh, talking from two sides of his mouth. I'm now quoting and paraphrasing uh, Ambassador Chaz Freeman, one of the most astute, uh, highly respected American diplomats who was directly involved in all of these issues at the time and has been since. As Freeman points out, Clinton started talking in both sides of his mouth to Russia. He was saying, we'll live up to the agreement in the United States domestically addressing ethnic minorities like the Polish population and with an eye on domestic votes. He was saying, we'll do something to bring uh, frontline states like Poland, uh, Hungary, uh, Slovenia into NATO. He was getting harsh condemnation of this from his close friend, supposedly Boris Yeltsin, who he helped keep in power by directing interference in Russian elections. Uh, Yeltsin was strongly objecting, objected again in 1996, uh, 1997. Clinton went ahead anyway and broke the agreement to Gorbachev. He invited Poland, Hungary, Slovenia into NATO. The Russians objected, didn't do much about it. 1999, uh, it's a complicated story, can't go into the details, but uh, the Clinton administration decided to bomb Serbia, close US Russian ally, didn't even bother informing the Russians. There was a pretext. The pretext is was to uh, stop uh, Serbian atrocities in Kosovo. The slight problem with that pretext, it requires inverting the chronology. The atrocity wasn't a pleasant place, but the atrocities were the predicted and anticipated consequence of the bombing. There is no ambiguity about that. There's been a lot of lying about it, inverting the chronology, but it's very firmly established. Well, that was, a, that was first of all, a crime in itself, but also it, it instigated huge atrocities, exactly. It was as was predicted by the uh, commanding general, Wesley Clark, 
uh, but also was uh, undertaken in a way to humiliate Russia. And the same was true later uh, under Obama with the bombing of Libya and of course the Iraq war in 2003. Mm -hmm. uh, Russia didn't like it, but accepted it. George W. Bush, uh, he just opened the doors, invited practically everybody and all the former Russian satellites into NATO. Uh, also in 2008, uh, W. Bush, the second Bush, uh, invited Ukraine to join NATO. That was vetoed by France and Germany, but it was kept open on the table in deference to the United States. Just about every high level US diplomat who had any familiarity with the uh, situation, including uh, current head of the CIA and others, warned once again that this is extremely reckless and dangerous. These are Russia's red lines, the heart of their geostrategic concerns. Mm -hmm. US went ahead, it continued, the US backed, uh, some say helped instigate the 2014 maiden uprising, uh, which led immediately to almost direct uh, efforts by what's called NATO, meaning the United States to uh, help uh, integrate Ukraine more or less within some kind of NATO style framework, sending weapons, training, and so on. The most significant current uh, information that we have is an important document of the Biden administration, September, September 1st, 2021. You can read it on the White House webpage. I've quoted it a number of times in uh, material you can find on Truthout, uh, and it's worth paying attention to. It's been silenced by the US press. I haven't seen a single reference to it, but we can be certain that Russian intelligence was reading it. What it says, it calls for, I'm quoting it, providing Ukraine with advanced anti-tank weapons, with a robust training and exercise program in keeping with Ukraine's status as a NATO enhanced opportunities partner. Uh, basically opens the door wider for Ukraine to join NATO, I'll quote it again, it finalized a strategic defense framework that creates a foundation for enhancement of US Ukraine strategic defense and security cooperation with advanced weapons, training, and so on. Again, in keeping with Ukraine's status as a NATO enhanced opportunities partner. Well, so, that's, that's last September. That's the latest, most recent official statement that we have about US policy. To go so, back, uh, whatever the explanation for the Russian invasion, we can, important, crucial question. Uh, the invasion itself was a criminal act, a criminal act of aggression, the supreme international crime on a par with uh, other such horrific uh, violations of international law and fundamental human rights like the U.S. invasion of Iraq, the uh, Hitler-Stalin invasion of Poland, and all too many other examples.